friendships, when I look at our friendship and I think about, you know, like we just said, the multiple times that you've poisoned me, the times that you've hidden all those little freaking creepy clown trinkets that you hid everywhere. You broke my computer. Yeah, but I gave so you the gift I of clowns. No, I don't. I, I think that I need to talk about my therapist with this, like what friendship means and what it looks like, because this could be toxic. It's that time. Oh, no. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Ten hat time. It's ten hat time. Ten hat time. Ten hat time. Do you ever do you ever think that like we're we're never quite on the same like pitch or key or whatever each time? At least I'm not. I I don't I don't I can't do it. So what sing together with another person and have it sound good? Yeah. Yeah, but also yeah. just on key every time. No. So. No, I'm not a trained singer, surprisingly. surprising. I know. It's very surprising. It's unreal. It's unreal. My voice sounds so trained. It sounds so natural. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. So pure. A, oh. a, true, no, it, a true natural. So. <coughs> right wow. on. What are we talking about this week? I was just about to say, do you wanna do you wanna take a deep dive into your very soul and I mean, talk about I guess demon possession? Yes, I do. I do want to do that. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a topic that is it what some people would consider a battle for the soul. Some people don't whatever. It's um so yeah, so this week I thought that I would bring um some demon possession mm. stuff to the table because that is a it's something that has terrified and fascinated me. Like, as you'll recall during the Dybbuk box stuff, when I got like mm-hmm. super creeped out and everything. And like, I don't know. I don't believe in the capital D devil, if you will. Like, okay. I mean, kill Satan, but I don't believe in like that. I don't know. I don't know. I, but I, like, I don't know that there's one gigantic demonic evil force that's out there clacking its hands together and waiting until the 77 seals are broken to start the apocalypse like or in the it. the Lil Nas X video the that devil or the bible or supernatural or mm. um good omens any of the things where that's the the seven seals that was a good movie from my childhood um oh, yeah but yeah, even though like I have, I've never necessarily believed in like the capital D devil. I do believe in the little minions. I do believe in like spirits that can wander around. And it's interesting because pre-Christianity, demon or Damien with like the A E smushed together, um, D- it just meant spirit pretty much. And a demon could be good. A demon could be evil. It could be kind of like a fae type of a deal where it's like, maybe yeah. it'll be nice to you this week. Maybe it'll be a dick next. One never knows, but leave out the cream. Um, yeah. And then Christianity kind of came along in that the meaning of the word demon became to be what we know of it today, which is, you know, an evil spirit um, typically one of Satan's little minions who just wants to get up in your soul, take it. And sometimes there's more Gross. than one up in you. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> with, with the tongue flicking and, and get up in you, like just. Yeah. Well, those demons want to get up in you. Yeah. Yeah. They sure do. Which I think yeah, should they be sure the title do. of the episode. Um, <laughs> So pos- <laughs> possessions happen in most, if not all, um, religions, but the, um, to some extent, but exorcisms can be done differently. So, uh, like in the Hindu religion, pause. Okay. So, um, some religions like in Hindu, um, some Hindus it, believe in possession, just like some Christians do, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. so they're yeah. kind of exorcism involves offering like candy or a gift or something and being like hey spirit what have you got the fuck up on out of here mm-hmm. yeah and that you that seems to work so cool not holy water no and i was about to get into that the catholics prefer a more hands-off like standing way back and you know 
sprinkling the holy water out of the thing and the power of Christ compelling you. Yeah. You know, that whole deal. Whereas Protestants perform what's called a deliverance where they're going to deliver you from evil. Oh. And they do this with the laying on of hands and through the holy touch of his Lord Jesus Christ. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know there was a difference. I ever went to, yeah, there is. It's a deliverance. It's not an exorcism. That's, that's too pagan. Because oh. Catholics... <laughs> Oh God! The like the whole religion isn't isn't whole, pagan. <laughs> thank you. No, I'm aware. And <laughs> pointing that out to the Baptists does not help you in any way, shape, or form. She learned how, the hard way in the tenth grade. It's a quick way to get rocks thrown at you. Yeah, that seems likely. So, um, but so. Yeah, so there's different types of exorcism. There's different types of demons that can possess one. Uh, we talked about the Dybbuk box and mm -hmm. how in uh, the Jewish tradition, there's the Dybbuk, which um, has its equal and opposite good Dybbuk, um, which, you know, can possess you to perform miracles. And then the Dybbuk, which can possess you to like perform, I guess, anti-miracles. Yeah, I thought it was like Dybbuk was like the the bad when like basically a bad soul yeah. possesses you. I thought there was like a different word for a good. There is a different word. I failed possession. to write it down for the third time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Yeah. Like, it, honestly, if anyone wants to go to like the, uh, I think it's like the Jewish uh, library.org. Like there's like all, all types of. Um, I was just straight up going to say, you go to up. Wikipedia. I mean, yeah, Wikipedia works too, but, um, yeah. but no, you give them a more direct source. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it in the bio. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that I would, um, talk to us this week about a couple of different cases of exorcism and demon possession. Um, cool. because it's so crazy. It's so fascinating to me, like, especially the idea that you know, like there have to be certain criteria for it to be an exorcism. You have to rule out different things. There has to be um, feats of inhuman strength. Uh, you need to um, possess hidden knowledge, which is like if you were possessed and then like you said something that only I knew kind of a thing, like you could, which I don't think that we have any of those things between I us. So. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure using the interwebs, you can find dirt on people, Mike. Right. But not in 1874. Time travel. So <laughs> we're not going into the wild speculation corner just yet. We barely started. Okay. 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 I'll okay. turn it down. Okay. Okay. So hidden knowledge, you know, like that deep, dark secret that you had, the demon will say it in front of everybody. And also knowledge of, um, dead languages or a language that you've never spoken um hearing a voice that does not belong to that person come out of it and don't give me the fucking tube and throat singing bullshit or yeah i know some people can make it sound like there are multiple voices speaking at the same time but it's a pretty hard skill my understanding yeah, to learn like look at like the beatboxers boxer beat beat beatboxers beatboxers in your own time yeah, beatboxers. That's a really hard skill to learn, like how to like hold a beat and then actually yeah. like rap or sing. I was gonna beatbox for a second and I decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> like you. first was like, I was like, I was like, <laughs> should I do it? And then I just picked up my beer instead. I was like, uh-uh. I was kind of wondering what that face was. <laughs> Make that hand motion look intentional. <laughs> Like, don't beatbox, Hannah. This is recording. Uh, uh, wait, no, I'll like so, just start the recording over. Like, just you starting beatboxing. That'll be the beginning of the episode. Like, I'll never, <laughs> I'll never beatbox. You catch me in the middle of weird songs and weird rants, and you're like, yeah, sure, we can start recording here in a minute. Let's chat. And then you just, I have Meh. a goal now. <laughs> uh, you're such a. Um, yeah, we should go to a therapist, probably. Together. Well, together, yes. Separately, too. Well, we both already do. So yeah, good for us. So working on it, little by little. Therapy kids. It's day good for you. Day by day. 
step Did by you? step. I can't. I, that's also off key. But like I was thinking that step by step theme song. Anywho. All right. I'm sorry. Go on. Okay. So um, hidden knowledge, you know, hidden languages, uh, being able to speak it with multiple voices, that sort of a thing. So these are things that like can rule out just a um, a epileptic episode, somebody with um, schizophrenia or going through a mental health crisis. Like back in the before times, that was what people were like, like you have epilepsy, there's a demon in you, let's get yeah. it out. And then you would just be cast out of society because they couldn't get the epilepsy demon out of you because it's, I don't know if you know this, Maggie, but epilepsy isn't caused by demons. It's news to me. So, well, now, you know, I bet if I um, looked on Wikipedia, I could have found that. So, yeah, but <laughs> you didn't <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> I love you. Um, Hannah so Jane better than Wikipedia. <laughs> Barely. Um, so let's cover a couple of different cases of demon possession and exorcism. Cool. So the first one that I wanted to talk about is the exorcism of Roland Doe. Okay. So this story um, takes place um, in was, the 40s. Was he wealthy? Stop. Was he a wealthy man? Why? Because <laughs> he was rolling in the dough. <laughs> <laughs> is his is his name seriously Roland Doe? It's a pseudonym to protect the 14-year-old boy's identity. It's D O E, like John Doe, but the boy's name he went by He's Ronnie. He's a rich boy. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, I'm done, I swear. <laughs> oh, you're not though. You're a fucking liar. Why um, would they name him that though? Uh, any other because name? it was the 40s and Roland was a regular name and they do Doe as the last name for people yeah. that they don't know like John and Jane Doe yeah. etc um, so Roland um, the, the exorcism and possession of Roland Doe was the inspiration for William P. Blatty's novel The Exorcist ooh and then later, obviously, the film, The Exorcist, which we all know and love. Yeah. Um, it's Real quick, have you seen The Exorcist? No. <laughs> <gasps> I, knew it. I knew it. You have to watch it, dude. It's so good. It's so scary. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll like live stream us watching The Exorcist together. Yeah, like eventually. Like that. And what yeah. was the other one we we're supposed to do? The Conjuring. The Conjuring. Um, I've seen The Exorcist of Emily Rose, though. Like, that's what comes to mind for me is The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Um, right. But So uh, this is this is the um, inspiration story for The Exorcist. In the 1940s, this family with their only child, uh, had the only child, Roland, as he's known, um, and he was very close with his Aunt Harriet. There weren't any other kids in the family, so he had to look to, like, the grown-up members to find playmates and he and his auntie harriet got along famously well auntie harriet sounds like she was a hoot and a half because she was a spiritualist and she oh. shows young ronnie how to use a ouija board cool and yeah you know as far as fun ants go absolutely super fun and ronnie was really interested in it or robbie um let's just call him roland so roland was really into it he liked the ouija board he you know got all into the spiritual occult stuff it was the 40s that stuff was very mm -hmm. popular it's always been popular it'll always be popular yeah um but she Those introduced him to the ouija board and i wrote next to it dumb um <laughs> because it is dumb don't, don't, don't hand a Ouija board to a child. Yeah. Just like a slightly um, older so, child, like a teenager. Yeah, like a 14-year-old boy. Yeah. Uh, don't give them, uh, don't play with Ouija boards, kids. We've talked about this many times. Don't, don't do it. Stay away from the Ouija boards. Or else you'll end up inspiring the exorcist. Hmm. So, um, so one way after Auntie Harriet, what? I said that's one way to get famous. It's not the way you want to go, kid. Um, 
So after Auntie Harriet passes away, the family starts to notice like strange occurrences. Um, Objects like vases or vases, whichever you prefer, begin to levitate um, and like around like in the boy's presence. He suddenly has their Lutheran family. So they're, you know, whatever that means. Watered down Catholic. Yeah. Um, And so they're you know, they go to church of a Sunday, that sort of a thing. And suddenly Roland starts having an aversion, an aversion to like religious artifacts and stuff. He doesn't. Oh, no way. Um, me too. Yeah. Well, different. <laughs> um, <do> they hear? <laughs> this is coming from, yeah, different. Um, so they start to hear disembodied voices, strange sounds like weird shit is happening so they decide to contact their lutheran pastor whose name is luther mike miles schultz and uh pastor schultz is very interested in parapsychology so he knows the families the family you know the church pastor guy so he is talking to the family and is like all right you know it seems like there could be a possession happening it could be isolated to your house though so why don't we have Roland come and stay the night in my guest room and I will observe and do you know yeah I did that too Uh, I mean yeah uh, let's let your young son come to a pastor's house did he stay alone I don't think so. I think his parents came too. I mean, if his parents, I also went couldn't too, find that like, information, and I, I just decided that his parents came. Yeah, knowing the forties, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They, didn't. they, they just didn't. said, "Here, priest, take, take our take young boy, who clearly is having issues. Spend the night yeah. with him." So after one night at um, Pastor Schultz's house, Roland. Uh, he goes back to Roland's parents and says, uh, you guys need to contact the Catholics. Because he's like, this kid possessed as fuck. Dang. So, yeah. So Edward Hughes was a Catholic priest who was contacted. Um, he performed an exorcism on Roland during which Roland's like, okay, so they take him to a hospital. Um, it was like run by the Jesuit order. And so okay. he's he's strapped down in the bed, you know, whatever. And he slips his little hand out of one of the cuffs and like goes under the bed and grabs a bed spring, jerks it out and just slashes the priest. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. He cut him up his arm and then like, they had to like halt the, um, the, uh, the exorcism. And Father Hughes was like, feels beyond me. This kid has the goddamn devil up in him. Oof. So they go to St. Louis to um, where a family, like family members lived in St. Louis and they contacted um, some Jesuit priests there as well. And the priest visited him at the relative's house where they witnessed the bed shaking and like, like by itself, just like the bed, like flopping around and um, the boy speaking in multiple voices in that deep guttural. He's 14 years old. Like, he can't make these sounds. Yeah. Um, he did the final exorcism. Um, yeah, and he had, it was extremely averse to the holy. Like, screamed when they were sprinkling him with holy water. Like, all that kind of stuff. Like, big writhing display of the demons. And during his final exorcism, the priest stated that the words hell and evil, as well as different scratches, appeared all over the boy. But it appears to have worked because Roland Doe went on to live a regular life afterwards. Weird. Like yeah. Just everything went no- away? Well, they exorcised the demon. Yeah, I, I know. But like, I don't know. I just think yeah, it's interesting. Everything, everything went back to normal well just because like one of those things like it seems like back before i don't know more modern medicine like exorcisms were really regularly linked to mental illness and i think people really didn't understand it i know that there's criteria that that meets it but i think even still people um didn't yeah really understand like one of the other cases we're going to talk about that oh okay Okay. Yeah. But in this one, yeah, his life went back to normal. The family's life went back to normal after this. So that to me 
sounds like they, you know, maybe young Roland had a demon up in him. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. Oof. That's that's wild. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, I just didn't, like, like write a book or anything like himself. Okay, I was gonna say. Okay, there's a book. Yeah, no, I know, but I mean, like the guy who actually well, like was possessed. Like, oh yeah, he um remained anonymous for the rest of his life, and as far as I can tell, never spoke about it. This is not something that was up for discussion or anything that he was interested in getting money from like writing a book or public appearances or even coming out after the exorcist happened like he did not want shit to do with it from what i have been able to find i feel like that would be I'm one of those things that like it would almost be like a good thing to keep tabs on him because it would be kind of a surefire way to know if he was possessed or not because if he like went on to do some crazy ass shit like murder well, i people, think that i you know. think that if he had gone on to murder people, we would know about it. I know. You never know. I mean, if you I don't think his that name. He, like I said, from all accounts, no, they didn't change. He didn't change his name. They changed his name for anonymity's sake. No, I know. I'm the, saying he could have changed his name after that, though. Right, Going on a deep he dive. Did it. He when just the witness protection, it. like okay. just the whole. <laughs> all right. What's the next Here. one? So, it's funny that you brought up The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Ooh. Because the one that we're going to talk about is actually the inspiration for that. Okay. Which is The Exorcism of Annalise Michelle. Yeah. This is the only one that I know anything about. Yeah. She unfortunately died um, as a result of receiving 67 Catholic exorcisms like for a week. She refused to eat or accept any medical attention before her death. Um, and like leading up to this, she was a very devout girl and she suddenly showed an aversion to religious artifacts and started hearing voices. Uh, she was diagnosed with epilepsy and depression and she went on medication for this for, for many years and felt that she was getting no relief from her symptoms. Hmm. Um, and because of this, she and her family began to believe that she was possessed. So she, like I said, she was a very devout person. And for some people who are very devout, um, being possessed is a sign of like, like your piety kind of a thing. Um, okay. Yeah. So like the devil would only go after you if he knew that like you were that close to God, that kind yeah. of thing. Like it, be, it can be a sign of your devotion that the demons want to go after you specifically. And it seems that Annalise Michelle kind of took it this way because she at some point decided that she was going to be a martyr. And um, she knew that she was going through this and like, she felt that because of what she was going through, because of the demons that were possessing her, um, and there were like six demons inside of her. Like, I think it was like Nero and Judas, it said Hitler, like a whole bunch of like the big bads and Satan himself. Um, so she felt that by her being possessed, that she could make up for the um, the sins of wayward youths and apostate priests and that sort of thing like that, you know, just doing that martyrdom savior thing mm -hmm. where um, and her family really gave into her wishes to no longer see a doctor. They just they like she yeah and they're in germany and i think they were in a little bit of a more rural area like that's kind of where these things happen weirdly yeah. um so strange rural areas although Limited. i guess the last one took place in st louis so that's not really all that rural that's a big damn city and like in it's connecticut true. whatever um but yeah so they she no longer wanted to see a doctor. She only wanted to have these exorcisms performed on her. And a the archdiocese agreed to it, but they said they had to do it in absolute secrecy. So the priests came to the house and just performed exorcism after exorcism after exorcism on her. And like um, Jennifer, Cl Jen I can't ever say it, but it's like where you bow and then you stand back up, but you're like, you bow to your knees and then you get back up like where you're putting yourself before the Lord in a gen... You've, I was never good at being a Christian. 
I have or no fucking from. idea what you're talking about. <laughs> There's this thing. It's this thing where it's like a, it's kind of like whipping yourself kind of a deal where, and like, you just kind of like throw yourself onto the ground, um, like in prayer and like asking for like forgiveness or whatever. But she did this so many times that she broke her knees. Jesus. And refused medical attention. Cool. You wouldn't Good eat choice. any food. Right? Yeah. Saw the choice family. She wouldn't yeah. eat any food. She was eating the bugs in her room. Huh? But she wouldn't eat food. She eventually died of dehydration and malnutrition. And her parents and the priests who performed the exorcism were charged in her for negligence. Um, good. In her death. Her parents did not serve any time, but the priests both served um, shorter sentences, but they served time for it. Um, and believers, people who were very moved by her devotion and by her martyrdom, and like there are people who really believe in Annalise Michelle as almost like a saint kind of a deal. And people will make pilgrimages to her grave to um, just to touch her gravestone, leave things there to like, because she is by some viewed to be a very pious and very holy figure. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Um, yeah, and there have been a bunch of movies, Requiem, um, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, a third one that's title is Escaping Me. But yeah, that's a crazy story because that one is you know, fairly, it's in the 70s, you know, like that's not that long ago. No, it's really not. This one, this one to me is a massive bummer because she didn't need to die. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, honestly, it sounds like she had some other mental health thing going on. Who knows? Maybe she had a fucking brain tumor or something. That's, you know, that is postulated. I read that on a few theories, that kind of thing. So I don't believe there was an autopsy. If there was, I couldn't find the report. Also, I don't like autopsy reports. Why? Because I'm squeamish. Oh, okay. I was just, just like, I don't like, like, it's like a piece of paper. I mean, you know, no biggie. Yeah. Um, so I, I like, feel like, oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just saying, like, I feel like this one was, is an overall massive bummer. But if it was true, even if she was truly possessed, they should have taken her to the fucking hospital. Yeah. You know, because the demons aren't going to let her eat, but maybe they'll let her get like a nutritional line in. Like well, it's not maybe worth- the hospital can also like sedate her so they can put in a feeding yeah. tube. So, yep. yeah. But I don't know if sedation works on it. Like if you were actually possessed, would they sedate your body? Would it sedate the demon too? I don't know. Cause I think you see that in movies. Cause I want to say in the exorcism of Emily Rose, they did try to sedate her or maybe it was yeah, a but exorcist movie. movie. But in that movie, we're like kind of seeing it from the, was she, wasn't she? Maybe it's a different exorcism movie that I'm thinking of. I, mean, I can't remember if that one was because they're at the it's the trial and what's their face? Laura Lenny or something like that. He's in it. Um no, I'm thinking of a different the one. Trial, I think I'm like, thinking of the exorcist movie trial. with um Anthony Hopkins. Um oh, oh, um, Why is that escaping me? It's a simple one too. It's like a oh my simple God, it's like the order or something. Yeah, something something like that. But yeah, it's like a whole thing it's where not, like it's just one where it's re- and it's a great movie. It's so good. It's based yeah, on like I mean, a real- Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. He's fucking terrifying. Right? So. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, he is. Have you seen his um, TikToks? Anthony- They're really scary. <laughs> yeah, I have a fun Anthony Hopkins tangent, tangential yep. tale, speaking oh, of him being scary. Yeah. What? Yeah. So one of my mom's friends uh, used to be a uh, sheriff in Ventura in California. Mm-hmm. And this was like in the nineties, right? Like right after silence of the lambs had just come out and like um, was taking everything by storm. And of course this guy had gone to see it. Um, and so he's, you know, out sheriffing about, and he gets a call that says, Oh, Hey, you know, one of the alarms went off at one of the celebrities houses. We're going to need you to go out and do a perimeter check. And so he's like, you know, 
carry it over and out. Aye, aye, whatever. So he goes over there. He does the perimeter check. He can't see anything. He figures a coyote tripped it. He goes and knocks on the door. Who should fucking answer the door but Dr. Hannibal Lecter? <sighs> and yeah, so my mom's bud was just like, ah, oh, Oh, God. Okay. Hi. And Anthony Hopkins was like, thank you so much, officer, for coming out. Oh, I appreciate it. I just feel so much safer. Would you like to come in for a nightcap? Like, I appreciate what you've done. He's like, no, no, I'm good. No, thank you. I'm not going into your house. (laughs) No. And then later he was like, I think I may have screwed up the chance to be like tertiary or like satellite friends with Anthony Hopkins but um I had just seen Silence of the Lambs no way was I going in that dude's house yeah I feel like that's gotta be like a a normal reaction from people yeah yeah like Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's probably an interview out there like I would just think about all the people that like have left acting because they played a role so well like I guess the guy who played Joffrey or whatever in game of thrones i guess he like Uh straight up quit acting like the kid the blonde kid yeah yeah he because people were so fucking mean to him all the time like on the street that he like he straight up quit (laughs) never again the kid who played anakin skywalker in Uh, the phantom menace that little boy got so much shit for like not playing that part very well and like not i thought he was cute it was real cute and like that's not his fault that's the director's fault okay he's 11 you gotta give a kid a lot more to work with anyway um let's go on to job he was not good no one did a good job in the prequel trilogy are you fucking kidding me i mean he's a kid i mean uh, my roommate made us watch all of those for his birthday he wanted to watch all of the star wars movies we only made it through the prequels like those are the ones with Jar Jar Binks, right? Yes. Oh, so arguably the best ones. You're the wrong kind of person. <laughs> I ought to hang up on you right now. Wait. Okay. Wait. Can't but are those behind me? Also, can't be behind me. Is that is that the ones with um, Natalie Portman too? Yes. When she suddenly forgot how to act. Yeah. This is arguably the best. Those are, you're wrong. Stop. I'm going to have a fucking stroke on the air, if you will. (laughs) So, but do you want to talk about, do you want to talk about the last case of exorcism that didn't work? Okay. Um, So this one, I'm going to give a little bit of a pre-warning that if you don't like gross violence, then... Tune out now or something, I guess. I don't know. What else are we here for? Buckle yeah, probably, up. Bitch. Probably listening Kidding. to the wrong podcast. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely listening to the wrong podcast. Um, Fuck out of here. Get out of here. Um, so th- I'm going to tell you about the 1974 exorcism of Michael Taylor, who lived in Osset, England, which is in Yorkshire. And Yorkshire, England has been compared to the American South in terms of like, very religious, rural, blue collar, you know, agriculture, that kind of a deal. That's where, yes, that's where England's rednecks live. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Mm -hmm. So in this very religious area of Yorkshire and Osset, Michael Taylor and his wife, Christine, were not overly religious. Um, They have five kids. This was in the 70s. So like life was fucking shit in England then. I don't know if you know, but like the, like, I'm not always just saying that to you, but like to everybody. I like Um, punk music. So, I mean, I kind of get it. Yeah. Um, But there was like, it was a huge economic depression. There was a mandatory three day work week um, because there was not enough work. Like you could only, you could only get work for three days a week. People could not find jobs. Michael was out of work off and on that sort of a thing. Um, They had five kids, which as the second of five, I can tell you is three too many Um, at a minimum. (laughs) But but so they, um, Michael's obviously and rightfully become rather depressed 
as a person. The spark and joy has gone out of his life. Oh, they also have a poodle. There's five kids and a poodle and depressed Michael and Christine, who's just like, God, I don't know how to keep all of this together. Ma. Mm -hmm. Um, And so one of their neighbors invites Michael and Christine to a Bible study and prayer group. It's like, you know, it's not like the Anglican church. It's cool and it's hip. And there's like this cool young lady who's in charge of it. She's like in her early 20s. She's like this hot young thing. Um, And her name's Marie Robinson. And Marie Robinson and Michael immediately start like flirting, McFlirt flirting all over the place. And Christine's just like, cool, glad that I'm here. Glad that you like this so much. We're now doing the meetings in our fucking living room. And I get to watch you flirt with this bitch in my own house while I refill people's drinks. Cool. Do um, they, that's Do they fuck? Not on record. Oh, but um, it's like heavily hinted at. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like they used to meet together for private prayer meetings where they would sit in prayer and thoughtfulness over each other. And by that, I meant he ate his dick. Yeah. Sorry, Dad. Um, (laughs) Let's forget he's there in the background. Um, So so Michael and Marie start crushing on each other, which everybody notices and is super icked out by. And then a little while into this whole thing, Michael and – or Marie – confronts Michael in front of everybody in his living room. Just be like, we need to get this out into the air. There is something going on between us, but it's, you know, a British accent that I'm not going to do. But imagine a breathy British accent. You could try. I'm not going to. Um, And Michael, fuck off. (laughs) Michael admits that he has evil within him like he says i feel i feel evil i feel evil in me all the time and then he like lashes out and they have to like restrain him and he like freaks out at marie and she freaks out right back um and so everyone's freaking out and then they get it calmed down and like they call the cops and the cops are like by golly this is supposed to be a bible study (laughs) there it is (laughs) yeah and then, you know, like, so things calm down. Michael comes back to prayer meeting and he receives an absolution from Marie, which is like a forgiveness of his sons. Mm-hmm. And, um, but his behavior, like, that doesn't really do anything, the absolution, like, to, like, free his spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, because he begins to behave more and more erratically and people are becoming concerned. And an exorcism or deliverance is performed on him uh, like by Marie and some people in the fellowship who do not have the experience. Um, and they do it the best. I mean, that's only in some areas. Why, Um, why hire a professional when you can just do it yourself, make it worse and then have to pay more money to a professional. Oh, bitch. You don't even know how bad they're about to make it. Oh God. Uh, I'm excited. So they decide that Michael has 40 demons within him. Oh. And they're exercising the living fuck out of this poor dude. And they manage to get up the uh, demons of incest, Mm. bestiality, lewdness, and blasphemy. But they felt that there were still demons left in there. They felt specifically that the demons of murder, insanity, and violence still remained within Michael. Mm. But they said, you know what? We're tired. Mike, Christine, why don't you guys go on home and come on back later and we'll finish this up. I'm so tired. And one lady was like, I think we left murder in there. And they're like, shut up, Barbara. Nobody asked you. Um, Oh, Barbara's right. So they had home. Mercifully, their five children had been, were at a family friend's house or the grandparents' house. They were not there. Mm -hmm. But so they get home. And then Michael brutally murders Christine. With his hands, he rips out her eyes. Oh. He shreds her face beyond recognition and rips her tongue out. Jesus Christ. Is that, is that, can you even rip a tongue out with your bare hands? 
I think that if you have the demon of murder in you, you can. Like, that's a really strong muscle. Like, Yeah. Yeah. And he ripped it out of her and then shredded her face. And then he grabbed their poodle. Oh, no. Not the dog. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is bad, Megan. This is bad. He pulls all of the dog's legs out. Oh! <gasps> Oh, my God. And then strangles him. Oh, Jesus Christ. And then, oh, I forgot to mention this whole time he's naked. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah, that feels right. If you're doing that with clothes on, something bigger is happening. Um, At least be naked if you're going to do that. This seems like a paint himself in blood type situation. Very much so, because his neighbor spotted him standing in the middle of the road, fully naked, Um covered in what he thought was paint oh my god so they call a cop the cop gets there and is like "Ooh, that's not paint that's a crazy person oh jeez covered in blood and then gets into the house and then sees the horrible mutilation of the wife and the dog and they immediately arrest michael taylor and then he gets acquitted like by insanity like what by reason of insanity and demon possession basically this is the time that demon possession got a man acquitted for murder i mean did he at least go to the loony bin yes and we don't call it that anymore okay um but i mean yeah so he was acquitted of the crime. He does not have a criminal record at this point. He was found to be insane. Yeah, and was that committed. is some insane shit. Yeah, he was found to be insane at the time of the murder and was sentenced to the Broadmoor Hospital for two years and then two more years in a secure ward in Bradford, Bradford before his release. So four years later, Homeboy is out into the world. With his kids i guess i don't know Did i didn't get custody i didn't look it up oh god i, I hope not i hope he's like well, he- also i'm not done oh so, oh no so in 2005 <laughs> he was found guilty of molesting a teenage girl and a week into his sentence he began behaving the way that he had during his possession and was ordered into a psych ward So, like, he was, again, like, taken out of prison and put into a psych hospital uh, for the criminally insane. But as far as I know, he resides there to this day. But, yeah, that's uh, that's the bummer. That's why you don't let people who are just trying to, like, dig around with a Bible group into your brain. And if you feel like you forgot the murder demon, maybe keep going. I don't care how tired you are. Get a banana, get some Gatorade, get back in there. You know, like, I mean, if you got out lewdness, which clearly they didn't because, you know, however many years later, he's a molester. But I feel like get murder out first. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like the first demon you go for, like priorities. But, like, fuck, that one's crazy, dude. Like, yeah, that's yeah, bad. Most, yeah, there is a really good last podcast on the left where they go into intense detail on it. And, like, this whole Marie lady and, like, all of, like, that Bible study, she was, like, she was on her way to making a cult happen. Oh. For sure. Um, until this happened and then like all the publicity about her Bible study group then got out and everybody was like, we'd rather not Bible with Marie anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the gouging of the eyeballs that I don't care for in particular. Eyeball stuff is very upsetting and obviously dog mutilation. Yeah, I mean, like, all all of it is upsetting. All of it is very gruesome and very upsetting. Yeah. Ah, I mean, like, okay, but, like, are we are we wildly speculating? Can I wildly speculate? Oh, by all means. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I have finished my tales of horror for you for I, this week. I, I, and I, I wanted to end on the juicy one. I didn't want to start with that one. God, that is 
felt like I've seen bad shit. Yeah. Uh, okay, so like, did Marie though, like, get him possessed? You know what I mean? Like, right, did she right. did she inject him with some, you know, like with some uh, demon demons. juice? I don't know. I, who knows what they were doing in their Bible studies? So um, it sounded like. It sounded like, like I was saying, like she was really into the power mm. of being a spiritual person, like in charge of other people kind of a deal. Yeah. So it was on its way to some culty shit. But I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that. Um, I think that this man was seriously disturbed from the jump. And yeah. Snippity snap snap. I mean, and maybe like, this is what happens when you lean in too hard on Jesus. Yeah, I don't know. Fuck something. Like, I'm just like so blown away by that I story. Know, you seem like you're like you're just like. Oh, I'm but sorry. I just like I just like am running through it's like the creative. scenarios in my mind, but like he had to have been like some type of like sheer insane in the membrane. You know, not type necessarily. Shit. People I, snap. Oh man, but do they rip out their wife's tongue and gouge out her eyes? Like Jesus! Again, if the demons of murder, insanity, and violence are up in your nuts, maybe. Yeah. Either that, or getting tortured for a few hours by your Bible study group makes you do it so oh yeah yeah because the laying on of hands is like you know get the jesus you know or yeah in with jesus out with the devil you know have you ever seen those um yeah like sort of like, like the, i don't know yeah it's i like know some people who tent. have been to exorcisms yeah like at church yeah and like the whole speaking in tongues and that and whole the thing power um cross compels you Yep, yep, yep. Um, I've never witnessed anything like that. The weirdest thing I ever had happen to me in a church was um, when I went to church with a girl because I'd spent Saturday night. It was Sunday morning, so that means you go to church with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Um, so I was going to church with my friend, and they had a snake oh. that they wanted people to hold. A Hard pass. Faith. And I was like, I'm really good off of that. Thank you. And I then I was like, like, I'm never going over to that friend's house again. The end. Like snakes. I like snakes as animals. Like I think they're interesting right. no, creatures. I love snakes. But I like in a church them. setting, it's like fucking creepy. You know why they do that, right? Like yeah. it's because like if, if, the, if you can hold the poisoned serpent, which is venomous, not poisonous, but whatever then um and not be bitten then you are pure if you are bitten you have the sin within you and now uh copperhead poison which is more important than the sin um yeah. go to the hospital you stupid redneck um jesus. literally jesus 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 christ superstar it's yeah god favorite. that oh that last one though man that one's that right? one's gonna that one's gonna fucking stick with me. Like, I'm gonna yeah. dwell on that one for a while. So Yeah. Um, well, that's what I have for you for this week. Three tales of possession and exorcisms. Um, yeah. So do you, you ever had any oh uh, go ahead? I was just gonna ask you, like, so do you think it's real or not? Like <sighs> Mm, to a degree yes like I feel like as somebody who believes in the spiritual and the esoteric and the occult or whatever then like don't I have to believe in possessions but like yeah. I feel like nine times out of ten it's misdiagnosed mental illness or epilepsy however this last dude I think had a devil in him I don't think it left ever. Or also maybe because, you know, in 2005, he was molesting. Then, you know, he, he maybe it just was a piece of shit from the jump. Yeah. Although I don't imagine that the four years in the psych ward was good. 
Yeah, probably not. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, if we're being real, it's like, 70s, I don't, I like, like, yeah. And I feel like Broadmoor Hospital has a reputation. Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah. I think, honestly, even even current mental health facilities, not always, right? But, like, you hear a lot about, um, like, abuse or like um Treatment. you know uh in the 70s though i mean weren't they still doing like electric ch shock like the crazy oh sweet Jesus. they still do electric shock therapy well, yeah but i mean like the the kind where it's like they put like jelly on your your temples and you know you know what thing i'm talking about like, yeah 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 the, the thing yeah you know um that that type of thing i mean the 70s like Oh man, I couldn't imagine it would have been great. So everything was shit in the seventies. It seems like and yeah. weird and bad yeah. and brown and that weird I, avocado green. I like, the, I like the avocado green. I feel like styly, yeah, like style wise, the brown like and the orange together. I like disco, unironically, and I don't give a fuck who knows it. Yeah, I mean disco is great. Like. I mean, I probably would have been one of those people that would have gone to what is uh, what disco di discotheques. Yeah, yeah. Like I, there's, yeah, I probably would have done that. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. Um, yeah, that's all. That's all I've got for this week. Um, what a crazy topic, oh, right? Right. Oh, also speaking of crazy topics, here's my recommendation for you for things to watch if you haven't watched it yet. Have you seen okay. Sons of Sam Netflix documentary that just came out? I started watching it. it. Yes. Yes. <gasps> I started it. I did. I did actually start that. That so. shit goes all the way to the top. The top of the crazy hippies. Yeah. I uh I think I only watched like the first episode of it okay and then i think i kind of fell asleep so i just never really was that interested in the son of sam yeah i um, wasn't either i but now i um really like because nick was like yeah did you not have you not yeah did, did you not i'm like no i didn't know this um oh, i mean i feel like ted bundy and like you know jeffrey dahmer like those are kind of like the heavy hitters you know um you're a little bit more get f more focus i guess and i think it's because they did other weird creepy shit like it wasn't just like walking into a car shooting and running away but um yeah like it was more yeah. um i don't know like the son of sam was so random and like it wasn't as involved i guess like ted bundy and jeffrey dahmer or fucking was it dude oh i'm only at the part where it's random and like it might be multiple people not just buckle, uh, david berkowitz buckle right up. Yeah. buckle up is that how you buckle up how do you buckle 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 buckle, buckle up buckle. like yeah i feel like you just like put your fists together like to like buckle like that's like the buckle up which is like, like side by um, side like side like not like you're you're giving yourself a fist bump but like side by side like okay click. whatever what do okay so or or watch the alternatively click only people watching youtube will get that <laughs> um, also only people who got to sit in the front seat as kids uh, this is discoing and clicking yeah just having a nice little disco moment you can, you can drive having the time of your life. Ooh. We should probably um, end it. But yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a good way to end that horrifying episode. Yeah. Um, email email us your stories, though, guys. Please email us, DM us, um, tell us yeah. your Yeah. Oh, and stories. shout outs to Paula. Shout out to Paula. Shout out to Angela. And shout out to Kat. Thanks for always engaging with us on our social medias, ladies. Yay. Um, and as soon as we have enough listener mail, because we're starting to get there, guys, uh, we want to do a little mini-sode where we kind of, you know, talk about some of our listener stuff. Um, yeah. So we really need some engagement. 
please send us your stories. For me, guys. Please. Please. Do We're it. desperate. Yeah. Uh, email um, us at uh, tinhattimepodcast at gmail.com. Um, is where to email. Follow us on Instagram at tinhattimepodcast. Slide into my DMs. I'm always checking it as a true millennial addicted to the phone. Um, so, you know, I'm right there ready to respond. Yeah, thanks for Megan will guys. eventually start on TikTok. Yeah, eventually. I'll start posting someday. Will you? Yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, yeah, thanks. We'll talk okay, to you next time. Bye.